Hey, Justin Dyson, Dyson Apiaries. Today we're gonna to do a quick lesson on beekeeping and bees. And this will be geared toward first graders, but could possibly be adapted to other grade levels as well. I hope you enjoy. So Justin, you are a beekeeper. Tell us a little bit about why you are a beekeeper. So I started keeping bees when I was barely walking, I guess. I was helping my dad out in the apiary any any that I could. Um, he, I think I am now a fourth generation beekeeper to, to the best of our calculations. So um, I always was fascinated by them, how a, one honeybee makes a tenth of a tablespoon of honey in its lifetime, but yet the entire hive might, might make four supers of honey, which would total 120 pounds of honey in, in a season. And how that one bee contributed that little amount and it became this large amount of honey, that was always fascinating to me. In addition, the, the environmental impact of honeybees with them being a, a major pollinator throughout the country um, including things like apple trees in our North Carolina mountains, um, cucumbers, and, and almonds in California, and a whole host of different plant species that, that our honeybees play a vital role in in agriculture and making sure that those crops produce the food that we need to eat. So Justin, tell us a little bit about the tools that a beekeeper like yourself would need so we have just a few tools. One is this, like this uh, inspector's jacket is what it's called. Uh, some people wear like a full set of coveralls and it's just, bees get a little upset. It keeps us from getting stung. Um, in addition, we have a veil and that's probably one of the most important pieces of protective equipment. Some people wear gloves, um, but this keeps us from getting stung. We use hive tools. Uh, the hive tool was just used to help us break the different boxes apart to break the frames apart so that we can manipulate the hive to, to work in the hive and figure out um, what's going on and, and check the bees and make sure they're healthy. Um, probably the coolest little piece of equipment is the smoker and we use, you can use a lot of different fuels in here but it just blows kind of a cool smoke out of it. Um, we burn pine needles and cedar shavings and things like that. Anything really can burn in there and the bur it just burns down to the bottom and produces a little smoke. But it's really cool because if you ever think about, well, bee bees communicate with pheromones. It smells. Um, a lot of their, a lot of their communication, they're, they're living in the dark inside these hives. So pheromones or smells is what they communicate with one of their methods of communication. So if, if someone comes and rips the roof off of your house and says, hey, what are you doing in there? You're probably gonna get upset. Well, the bees do too. So what we do is we use this smoke because the bees, when, when they get angry, they put off a pheromone or a smell. It smells a little bit like bananas. And, and what we use this smoke for is to suppress that pheromone because if another bee smells that same smell that the other bee put off it's going to get angry too so it, it makes the entire hive the whole family of bees in there like in your house the whole family of bees would get angry and we don't want the whole the whole family of bees getting angry because then that's going to hurt so what we use the smoker for just to suppress that a little bit so that's a pretty cool tool in my mind tell us a little bit about the different kinds of bees that we would find in your beehives? So firstly, honeybees are not native. They were not originally from North America or the United States. They all came from different continents. Um, some came from Europe. We have European honeybees. Uh, some came from Asia. Some came from Africa. I'm sure everybody's heard of the Africanized honeybee. Um, so 
they all came from from other places and came here so we have a lot of different varieties of honeybees one of the most common the two of the most common bees here that people use are Italian honeybees and Carniolan honeybees there are some other ones as well we have Dutch German bees we have Caucasian bees and then we have Africanized bees so there are some other different types as well now inside a hive of honeybees there are actually three different types of bees first everybody's heard of a queen queen's a little she's the biggest bee in the hive she's long and skinny but she's big because she has to lay 2,000 eggs a day during the peak of the season she's laying every single egg for every single bee that comes out in that hive and when a hive is 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 where it's supposed to be there might be 60,000 bees in that hive during our peak honey flows so that's a lot of bees and a lot of eggs that she's the mama to so I want you to remember that honeybees are an insect and they're just like a butterfly they go so she lays those eggs and when she lays that egg it emerges it, it hatches into a larva and then a few days later they cap that cell over and it becomes a pupa just like a butterfly you know how a butterfly it, it does the metamorphosis and it goes as a caterpillar into the pupa stage and then when it comes out it becomes a beautiful butterfly well honeybees do the same thing they do it all in a little cell so she lays those 2,000 eggs a day and every one of those eggs hatches into a larva and then that larva becomes a pupa and then at the end of that cycle we get bees that hatch out or emerge as adult bees. So that brings us to the other type of bee. There's the worker bee. All the bees that we see on the little flowers in our yard and, and all of those things, those are worker bees. Guess what? Those are also females. So those little girls do every bit of the work in the entire hive. They go out, well firstly, in the hive, they take care of building new wax for the hive. They, they, uh, they take care of feeding the baby bees. They guard the hive. They do a lot of different duties within the hive. They take care of the queen. Um, but then one of their last duty, their last duty as an adult worker bee is that they go out and they forage and they go find nectar and pollen to bring back to the hive. Now I'll come back to that in just a minute, but I want to talk about the third type of honeybee that's in the hive first. The third type is the drone. The drone is the only male bee in the hive. Now there are multiple drones, but their only job is to mate with new queens. That's their only job in the hive. They don't go out and gather uh, nectar or pollen or anything for the honeybee hive. They just eat and that's it. So we would like to know why are honeybees so important? Honeybees are a major part of our agricultural system, of our food system, all of those things the honeybees play a, a, a huge part in. If we think about an apple or an almond or a watermelon or any of these fruits, they require pollination. And, and the, the bee has to go to those blooms and move that pollen into the female part of that plant so that it will create the crop that we eat. We eat the, we eat the apple or we eat the almond. We eat those fruits. Now the flowers, they want the bees to come to them too. So that's where it comes into why do the bees even go there? So the bees need two vital things for them to survive. The bees need nectar, which is their energy. That's the sugar. They need energy. The second thing they need is pollen, which is their protein. That's like the building blocks of our body. That's what builds muscles and things. So as the honeybees are in that larva stage, like I talked about earlier, and when they're really, really young as adult bees, they need pollen. They need protein so that they can get stronger. So. The bees do work a little bit of the pollen for that, but the primary reason they visit those blooms is for nectar so they can have energy. And they store that up in their hives as honey. So it's really cool that 
we need the we need the fruits and and things like that that they go out and they pollinate the the trees or the or the fruit vines or whatever they're pollinating need the bees to come pollinate their bloom so that they can create the fruit so that they can reproduce and make seeds they can't do that without the honeybee and then we kind of like the honey so it's kind of cool how that comes all the way back around in full circle all of these things play together so now we would really like to see what's going on on the inside of your beehive we can do that we've got our smoker going here See what this hive is doing. So remember I was talking about pollen as the building blocks for the bees and being the protein? This is how the bees store that in the cells. You see those shiny little cells there. So we can see in here, if we look really carefully, there's some eggs in there. And there's some larvae. You see some bigger larvae there. And then if we look right over here, here is some capped, what we call capped brood, and that is honeybees in the pupa stage, and they are metamorphosizing, and when they emerge, they will be an adult worker bee, just like these. Here is the queen. Now she's not quite as big as she is during the spring of the year because she usually lays a lot more eggs in the spring of the year. But she's still quite a bit bigger than the worker bees you can see beside of her. And she's got a little dot on her back and, and the only reason we put that dot on there is it makes her easier to see. And it also tells us what year, how old she is because queens go for more than one year. And we have a color code that tells us what year is what color. Now when bees get honey to the moisture content they want it, they cap it over. You see this wax capping here? If I open that up, that's honey underneath there. And that's the way the bees store their honey. Now they need a lot of honey to make it through the winter. Sometimes a beehive needs 45 pounds of honey just to make it through the winter. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you learned something about beekeeping and about honeybees and why they are so important for us. Maybe when you get a little older, you can have a couple hives of your own. Thank you for joining us.